four. Are we live? We're live. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Dark One of Well, the Witcher campaign, part two of um, the Dark One of the Woods. Uh, uh, we are missing one player tonight. Um, Kahir Kerdwin, different Ep Bedwir, is not here. Uh, for this episode, so there will be a little something uh, at the beginning to just explain why uh, his character is out of commission for now. Um, but otherwise, let's just go around the table, introduce ourselves, uh, who you are, who you'll be playing tonight, and um, and then we'll jump r right back in where we left off. Oof, words, I swear. So let's start with uh, Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren. I will be playing Ilona the Elf Bard. Cool, Jillian. Oh, I forgot. I'm always third. Hi, I'm Jillian, and I play Ariella the Witcher. Da da. Uh, hi, I'm Bag of Snails, uh, and I'll be playing uh, Idruk the Mage. And our returning guest for this week, Koros. Hi, Hello. how are you? Hello, chat. I am playing Lady Alcina, Ver Nilfgaard, La one of the last witchers of the Viper School and knight to the Emperor. And I am Wandering DM. I'll be GMing playing a bunch of random NPCs. Before we dive back in, can you guys remind me real quick what happened last episode? And do not mind the broken kitten that just jumped on my microphone. <laughs> okay, so we just got back into Oxenfurt. Here was eating a raw potato, so we decided to go inside. Then we go over to Chorus's character, who was talking to one of the elves about an issue where there was a lot of fog and everyone was doing some sort of ritual and got killed over it. So they all head to Oxenfurt and Ilona went to go get a room at the Rosebud. They said, you can get a room, but it's only in the stables. So basically, they was kind of mad because she was like the best entertainment they ever had at the Rosebud. There was some sort of conflict. Well, a lot of things happened. Dramatic reuniting with uh, with Ejluk and our guest. And I was very jealous of it. And then our guest witcher was like, I'm going to handle the situation at the Rosebud. So me, Ejluk, and them went over there. There was a lot of drama, and Egypt ended up getting uh, the, the tavern owner a rash. Then I punched him in the face. We figured out what was going on and went to the woods, and then all the fog happened. And we're probably going to be in the middle of a fight right now. Yeah, specifically, we discovered um, that a member of the Scoyotel, the local Scoyotel cell, had been uh, attempting to create a miniature conjuration of the spheres. And he had brought this information to me uh, a couple of years ago, uh, me being Hedrick. And uh, naturally, I told him it was a bad idea. He attempted to go through it with it anyway, and uh, it wound up with almost the entirety of his cell being killed. Um, we got on the case um, with... Uh, Lady Alcina, and whom I have a long history with, a short history, a complicated history uh, that's not been entirely revealed, but we have been hunting before uh, during Ariella's absence. And as well, uh, despite her reservations, Alona also decided to join in and help this poor uh, starstruck young elf even though she wanted nothing more than to be rid of Idruk and his 
uh, foul temperament. Also, hashtag shape squad is now a thing. Yes. Also, now we're all gonna die. So let's find out what's happened. Yes, because last we left, you were in that clearing where the elven mage had died. No, 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 we weren't. Yeah, we were. Back in a nice, nice, cozy inn. We're with s- sipping wine and having a good time, and you, not. You can uh-huh. close your eyes and pretend you're in a cozy inn as much as you want, Lady Elsina. The truth of the matter is, <laughs> you're standing in a cold, damp clearing, clearing, with this mist, this heavy fog, swirling about you. As the mist thickens, you cannot help but notice a darkened shape swimming in it. Like, um, not unlike a fish or an eel. From time to time, you can almost see the shape breaking away from the mist, coming closer to you. But it's always behind this wall of fog. Um, a bit. At some point, as it nears the party, Kahir draws his Vicovaro blade and puts himself between Alona and the creature. And he challenges it to combat, to get out of its, uh, you know, out of, of its hole and into the light, to face them as as one would have it. And, not just pretend and scare, see if the creature is actually has any metal in it. And as an answer to that challenge, you just see this piece of the fog that breaks away like a violent cloud. And it rams into Kihir and knocks Kihir down on his back. Upon falling, Kahir knocks his head on a root and falls unconscious. Kahir! That way I don't have to roleplay him. (laughs) Um, But also, Ilona, because you're next to him, you notice that his breastplate, the armor he's wearing, doesn't have an impact on it as as you would you know probably expect from being hit so hard in the chest by something instead it's been scratched deep in the plate not enough to go through the armor but enough to ruin any coloring any patterns or or symbols might have been uh, either engraved or painted over the armor um, and Idric's sleeve has been similarly uh, torn as he fell over. Okay. He Oh, two seconds. Sorry. He must have been lucky, though, because he doesn't have his sword in his hand. The sword is stuck in the mist, and you can see it float. You can see it clearly where it landed on a creature that doesn't seem to have any form. But there is a floating sword clearly stuck into something. Yes, uh, Manny. Okay, that's actually really good. So with the sword stuck into whatever this invisible form is, uh, is it within 10 meters? Yes. I'd say the fog is about three meters away from you. So like 10-ish feet. I'm gonna use telepathy to try and talk to it. Uh, It's two stamina points, Mm -hmm. um, plus it's active. Um, and it allows me to com- uh, communicate telepathically with one subject for the duration of the spell, and it crosses language barriers. As you cast telepathy and reach out to that creature's mind, I'm going to ask you to make a stun save. So it's a d10, and you have to roll mm-hmm. equal or lower than your stun uh, stat. Okay, all right. Uh, one d10. I can do this. Yes, I'm all right. Okay. My stun is nine. Good. Your, for the purposes of this spell, each turn that you want to talk to that creature, you're going to have to make a new stun save. And I'll explain to you why in a second. 
Um, but every time you succeed, your stun is going to go down by one temporarily. Like you'll have a, a minus one penalty um, because this mind that you touch is utterly alien to this world. You just hear this cacophony of animal noises, goats and deers and coyotes and wolves other animals you've never heard before but the cries coming into your brain into your mind are clearly not human in origin and behind everything behind all of these cries you can make out a word or maybe an emotion and it just says oi hunger <coughs> Find your food elsewhere tonight. Uh, and I'm going to try and intimidate it. All right. That would be the end of your turn. Uh, okay. The intimidation. And then um, if you want, and I can certainly allow that, if everybody else wants to join in, we can do mm -hmm. a social combat. If you want to try to cow the beast using words instead of steel and silver. Or if you want to distract it for the steel and silver to come down later, this is also possible. That's what I'm good at. Uh, did we all hear it talk? It's you only saw Idric like fall on one knee, hold his temple, and mutter, "Find your food elsewhere." Um, it hurt. It hurt my boy. So uh, I'm gonna. I wanna. I wanna fight it. <laughs> you wanna physically fight it? I'm gonna fight it. Yeah, I want to shoot it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then Idric, make your intimidation check because I don't think none of the Witchers are gonna join in in trying to cow. No, no, this, this is creature. gonna fucking die. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where? Yeah, I where, got my... Sorry. Sorry. Where is intimidation? I'm not under, seeing it. Under Will. That's mm -hmm. under Will. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Jillian. I was just gonna say my sword is full of vampire oil. I'm ready to go. You. Yeah. A 13. A 13. Um, uh, all right. Yeah. I am going to roll a courage check for that creature. <laughs> wow, that didn't work. No. But now you know what they're... Oh, no. oh shit. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> so it's got a 21. I'll eat your face. I, I don't think it's intimidated, guys. <laughs> I don't think no. so. Um, before we start combat, I just want to really quickly check if mm -hmm. Lady Alcina was assuming this is a vampire. Seeing it now, is it, does she still think it's a vampire? You still haven't seen its shape, its true form, okay. but you... I'll say make a, make a Witcher training check. Okay, that's uh, t -t -t where do I? Pull? That's your profession skill. Uh, would be at the moment it would be five plus your intelligence modifier. Then plus two because of the vampire. Not the with a plus two. So oh, it's, oh god, it's because not you're not sure. So okay, so seven. Okay, one d ten plus seven. Yep. Actually, no, that's plus my intelligence mod. Uh -huh. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. No okay. getting used to this. So I mean, this is be... your second time. Twenty-five. I'm sorry, you said twenty-five. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, it is not a a vampire. What you think it could be would be some sort of fiend, a relict. Uh, that's how they're called. Creatures that were pulled forth from other worlds during the conjunction of the spheres. Um, they, for the most part, do not have any um, common trait between themselves. You know how all vampires have certain abilities or, or what have you. Relicts are all different. Each one would need to be studied individually. Um, 
in order to know, you know, what its weaknesses or anything are. But as a witcher, you also know this. Relics are sensitive to silver. Okay. And I'm gonna snarl out, it's like, it's not a vampire, it's a... We were wrong. It's a relic. As you... Hmm. Can everyone make a perception check, an awareness check, when you're awareness. shouting this thing? Yeah, shouting awareness, at this thing. Awareness, awareness, I got a critical. All right, we're not going to use the critical fumble button, uh, Jillian, because that's plenty enough anyway. <laughs> you already make it, even if it's higher. Um, so that would be Idric and Ariella. You I'm notice... too, I'm like on my knees still like freaking Not out over here. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but the two of you, Ariella and Idric, you notice that when Lady Elsina screamed at you that it's... Uh, can you repeat you what you just said, Koros? It's like, it's not a vampire. It's a re... It's, it's a... Uh, we, we, we were wrong. It's a re... A re... A re... A, re a relic. As she says that, you notice that the beast seemed to have recoil, recoiled inside the fog. As if perhaps it is sensitive to loud noises. Because it didn't do that when Kahir called out to it. But Kahir didn't yell out the the challenge. So we're gonna go into combat. Okay. If y'all agree with Aurelia. it. I'm how gonna... do you fight? So, how do we fight in The Witcher? Um, for well, starters... I was asking what Aurelia's uh, fi fighting style was like. Oh. Um, but yes, that too, that too, yes. <laughs> There's a button for your initiative on your character sheet. Yep, it's in the quick roll buttons. I got a... Uh, wow, Ariella is just critting everywhere. She's, yeah prime to go we might need to roll an extra d10 for you ariella i'll just check depending on how high my initiative is in case we need to break ties um oh boy i don't think we're gonna need to break ties i got a 13 y'all go before me kill it so because you all play before me you can go around in the order that you wish you can uh talk amongst yourselves decide who wants to go first second third and fourth uh and then the beast will go if beast there is after after the fact. Uh, can I ask just a real fast tactical question? Yes. Um, can I have two castings of telepathy up at once? That is a good question. I don't think because there isn't anything in the game that prevents. Like it's not in D, like in D&D &D where you have concentration spells that you yeah, cannot I would hold just be burning both at once. You'd be burning more stamina every turn. If I use telepathy on another person, could I like link them into the conversation, conversation uh, with this relicit or re relict? Sorry. Hmm. I'd say. I'd be willing to spend more stamina to do it. I mean, all right. Uh, it is That's not funky. beyond the realm of the, of possibilities. Um. Mm -hmm. You'd probably have to make like a spellcasting roll for it. Okay, I would like to try that, um, and um, I would like to try and loop um, uh, Elona into the conversation, so to speak. Um, I would like to go first. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I want to go first, and I want to like scream and arrow it twice because it hurt my friend. And I'm real mad at it. Oh, we're not discussing who goes first, second, third, or fourth. No. I mean, I would like to go first to okay. do that. Okay. <laughs> is 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 the discussion? May yeah. I go first? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I go second? I feel like that makes sense. I just yeah. I just narratively feel like it would make sense for me to react first. Um, yeah, I'll go last. That's fine. Okay. So but, Ilona yeah. goes first because she is beyond uh I'm, pissed and I'm, grief i'm real mad i'm real upset you bring up your bow so okay it's been a long time since so i roll archery 
You would roll a d10 plus archery plus dex. Okay. And that creature is going to try to... Oh, dodge. action type! Atta oh, that's fun! It, like, it has a little box. Really? Yeah, extra I'm... action, yes! Wait, that's... where? When you roll deck, when, it, when I'm rolling archery, it's like, is this an attack type? I don't, yeah, I don't have to run because I'm just there. I'm standing over oh, that's nice. his body and I'm like, ah! except not that. Yep. Um, all right. So make standard your... strike. Ah! Elven trap. Oh my God. It's so much firing range. Um, I guess I'm long range question mark. No, you'd be like at short range. At short, well, there's point blank, close, medium, and long. Close. We'll do close. close. Okay. Oh my god, target location. Um, Wait, extra action uh, would be yes. Uh, no. Yes. No, because what? it's not. I can... Yeah, but no, what, what they're asking is basically, is this an extra action that you're going to spend <sighs> stamina to okay. roll for? So, it's an attack. No extra action. It's a standard strike. It's with my bow. It is close range. Mm -hmm. um, target. It's just uh, missed. It's random. So, Leave it at random. random. You're not calling a shot or anything. We yeah. don't have any additional yeah. mods. Wow, this is the most complex die roller it's, I've seen. It's very. <laughs> but it's super it's, comprehensive. Like I don't. We don't have to do anything. We don't have it. It does all of the math for us, which I really like. Mm-hmm. It didn't, uh, add, it didn't add the decks, though. Oh, no, that's me. That uh, I rolled with, like, a, a oh. random... I have, like, a wow. random character sheet. Wow, so that's, that's so many numbers. That's yeah. so, did it add my decks? Question? Um, a d10 plus 7, stat, yeah. plus 4, Okay, skill. it was just bad. I just rolled... Plus 1, it. weapon accuracy. Yeah, you rolled yeah. a 5. Um, yeah. Do you want to spend luck on it before I resolve my check? Yeah, I have so much luck. How many points? Right, it gives me like a plus one to stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, let's do let's do like two. Uh, no. Hopefully let's, the let's mic do, is gonna. Let's do three. Um, you might want to put it up. Uh, or let's put it up to twenty. Um, you might right. want to turn off like auto adjust on whatever oh, oh yeah. it's it's never on auto adjust that's the thing normally it should have just freaking work let me just verify my zoom settings real quick professional just, streamer i will say with the pop filter out you sound yeah it's it's in cardioid mode so i thought it would work but this might be better Sorry, everyone, you're going to see my microphone. Uh, but it might also be the connection. Anyway. So anyway. Cool. So you have a so 20. Oh, it's a 20. I have a 27. Oh, my God. So I don't hit it. That was with your first attack. You're an elf. Yeah. You can fire yeah. twice. Okay. I'm gonna do it again. Go and that through creature this is gonna have to burn some silly stuff. Yeah. That twenty plus is for dodging. Gee, whoosh. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. Is a is a is a very dexterous thing of mist. Oh no! Uh oh, no. oh. Can you do use? Do I fumble? Yeah. Okay. Can you use the fumble button, like crit or fumble? All right. Oh but no! It I just already, means I... you remove you you remove nine from okay. your check. <laughs> um, so you got four. It's a nice round number. Yeah, but yeah. because you rolled a nine on the second roll, uh, something might happen to you. What? To your bowl. a nine? Yeah. What? Well, the so you. There roll... a fumble table. I hate fumble tables. Um. I mean, it would be. What's your uh, okay? No, the result is a four, right? So there's the no fumble. Result is a four. Yeah. yeah. It's you have to basically go down to like negative numbers for something to happen. Yeah, my bow is fine. Your bow is absolutely fine. However, you to... miss the creature. It, yeah. 
going to dodge anyway, but you miss the creature. Um, you fire two arrows in quick succession into the mist as you scream uh, aloud, either in elder speech or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I'd probably be screaming in eldish. Um, the creature, after your second arrow, that shape, that eel-like shape in the mists begins to take a more solid form. And out of the mist near the uh, the ground, you notice a big cloven hoof land in the grass in the clearing. And it's attached to what appears to be a large goat leg made Gross. of bark and moss. I hate it. It's not supposed to be pretty. Okay. I'm just telling you I hate it. Um, but it seems to be perhaps stunned or staggered from your screen because it stopped moving. I'm going to ask you, um, Ilona, to make a... Well, I think as a singer and a performer, that would go into perform. If you can make me a perform check please. Okay. Performing or busking? No, performing. You're not trying uh, to get performing. money out of this I guess creature. Not bus. Not yet. <laughs> well, that'd be weird. Night. That would be very weird. 19? 19. Do I hurt it with my The creature scream? Actually, yes. Uh you Give it a minus two to all of its actions until uh, your next turn. All right. Meaning that even on your next turn, she's it's gonna have that penalty. Um, okay. And uh, and then after it's going to be fine unless something happens. Who's next? Me. So I see this thing. This come out of the mist and it looks very staggered. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing that would be the part where I attack it, right? Go and attack it with my silver sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want to so, jump into the mist. So is it still in the mist, or...? It's... There's only this giant leg that came out of okay. the mist. Everything okay. else is still. Can I attack the leg? Uh, yep, that would be a cold shot. Yeah. I'm gonna try and attack the leg while screaming. I know that from, because I rolled really well in my awareness from, I know that it's a relic, and somehow screaming made it weak. So I will attack it with my, uh, where is my melee? There it is. My swordsmanship, not melee. Swordsmanship, that's what it is. So I'm going to do that with the silver sword, so go... Action type attack, extra action no, fast strike with my silver sword. Fast strike would mean that you would have, uh, you could make two attacks. Okay, yeah, so it's a, f yeah, I'm doing a fast attack. Alright. So it's with my silver sword. So it's just gonna be like a leg, right? Yep. Because of specific targeting. Okay. Additional bots, blight ray, no vision, terrain. No, there's nothing. Uh... No, okay. And 20. That is a 20, and I have a 22. <laughs> what? Okay. Where'd Sorry, you... is that minus the... Uh... That's with the minus yeah. two. Mm -hmm. Just double checking. That's with the yeah. minus two. Um... This thing's tough. This thing is very agile. <laughs> it is. I'm gonna go again. Gonna go again, cause it's my next. Att it's my t second attack, cause I did mm -hmm. a fast attack. Did, did fast strike with a silver sword. Target the leg. And. Critical. All right. Uh, click on the critical button because that okay. means you might just be able to strike it. Um, where do I click? Click it from. Quick roll buttons under your initiative. Oh, oh, 
Oh, and a munition? There you go. So that's a 30. 30. 30. I have a 22. <laughs> so yes. you you do hit. You do hit on its leg. Um, oh. Thank you, Kitten Witcher. Thank you. You hit the creature on the leg. Um, I'm going to ask you to roll for damage. Damn, okay. It's uh, oh, and it was a crit, so add a um, two, 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 two. it's a plus three, I think. Yeah, plus three to your damage. All right, so because it's weak, so it's around three d six plus two plus uh, plus what? three, so three d six plus five. I don't think it added my uh, extra d6. No, it only did uh, regular, because the regular damage would be a d6. So just roll an additional 2d6. Alright, roll additional 2d6. That's uh, 17. Did I need to add anything? 17? Because it was, was um, it crit? No, well, the plus 3 damage was because of the crit. Um, okay, however, so that's 17 minus its armor. Oh. So that's a seven, and you're mm -hmm. hitting it on a leg, so that's yeah. half. So that would be mm -hmm. three points of damage. Yep. Wait, so that's like, so that's 17 plus three would make 20, though, wouldn't it? Oh, the three wasn't included. Yeah, okay, sorry. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It included. wasn't included, yeah. So that's uh, 20, 20 divided by two, 10, 10 uh, 20 minus 10, 10, and then, yeah, five points of damage. Yep, five points. It's Yay. better than nothing. Um, it is better than nothing, and I yelled, too. I was yelling. Well, because it's stunned at the moment, uh, or staggered, you're, you, you can yell, sure, but there won't be any rolls. Uh, okay. Basically, the first person that goes is the one that can, you know, uh, do something. Okay, that's fine. But that's okay, next turn, if you want to pick up the mic from, from Alona, uh, you guys can discuss it. That would be Lady Elsina. Koros, it's your turn. Lady Elsina. She's going to shout out, it's like, Owl! Use Yirden! We need to slow it down. And she's going to turn to um, uh, Idruk and say, Get rid of the mist or may make sure it stays still. It's too fast for us. I'm going to go around. And with that, she's going to run, leaping over a log, uh, may, um, with um, her 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 jambia and silver sword in hand, and rush into the trees nearby. Um, my intention is that I want to try to get around the creature to where it can't see me, okay, and stealth that way. Because I want to try to get the jump on it from behind. What's your run speed? My run speed? Uh, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Top right of your sheet. Sorry. Yeah, That's okay. Sick. My run speed is 21. All right. You can make it. In, in sure. uh, That would be your turn, though. Drawing your okay. weapons and then going behind. Unless you want to start draining away from your stamina to have an extra action. Um, I've got 30 stamina. It would cost you um, four, I don't remember exactly, but we'll say three points. Sure. Okay. I'll do that. So here's what we're going to do first. Before you take away the stamina, before you roll your stealth check, as you enter yeah. the mist, you jump over the log and you mm -hmm. have to go into the mist a bit. When you enter the mist, you feel this overpowering um, feeling that is like this voice inside your mind that keeps telling you that there is no danger and that you're just you're just lost. Everything's fine. You just you know, when you're lost, you have to stay put and wait for someone to come get you. So, okay, you so the mist isn't just around the creature, it's across the forest. The entire clearing, yeah. Um, 
Okay. Make a resist magic check. Okay, well, Please. I got two in it, so we'll see how that goes. The, um... 16. 16. And the DC is... 12! Yay! You made it. You shake off the feeling of numbness and powerlessness. And you just keep going, find the tree, hide yourself behind it, make your stealth check. Okay. And that would be against a... Oh, boy. Uh... Mm -hmm. All right, stealth check. Yeah, you make it. You yeah. are completely hidden from the creature. You spin around from behind the tree. And okay. reach I'm waiting. up. Sorry. Which weapon do you want to strike with? Because you're only going to get one attack. Well, no, no. Like, I'm, I'm waiting until the mist is gone or I can fully see the creature so I can see a weak spot. Right now, I'm just waiting oh. for an opportune time. Okay, so then you can keep your stamina. I thought you wanted to make your attack in the same turn. Okay. Well, if uh, well with the extra a action, I'm going to down my wyvern decoction. Good, good. What does it do yeah. for people at home? Uh, for the people at home, let me go down a little bit. Do, 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 do. Sorry. We have a decoction recipe. Oh, wait, it doesn't really help. Never mind. Oh, well, Sino actually has potions yeah. Yeah. brewed up For already. For Wyvern decoction, mm -hmm. you gain plus one damage to your next strike after a successful strike. This plus one is cumulative and goes up with each hit until the combat ends or you take damage. Good. So the more you hit, the better you'll hit. Mm -hmm. And so I just like grab a flask from my belt and it's this like mm -hmm. swirling red and an iron um, drink that's inside this flask and I bring it up to my mouth uh, and my face goes forge red for a, mo a, mo a, mo a moment as the veins in my face just all almost inflame and begin to pass through me like a wave like <sighs> my eyes go wide for a second and then like I breathe out like a pu puff of smoke <sighs> I'm just waiting in the trees so then it's my turn right yep. mm -hmm. alright so I will roll I need to get under an 8 okay I'm fine uh, for the stun mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to cast telepathy onto Lona and my initial like the initial like burst of thought is um, before I tried to loop the spells together. It's just, Alona, help me attack its mind as well as its body. Um, and then I'm going to make my spell crafting check to try and loop her into the into the thing. Uh, may I resist magic? You could. I think telepathy can be resisted with resist magic. Uh, I don't want. I I feel like if if somebody just started talking in my head, I'd freak out. That's fair. <laughs> um, it says there's no defense. There's no. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh. Okay. But I figure I figure it's probably because you you're normally like the recipient of the spell normally would want to. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, we'll no, it's say. it's fine. If there's no defense, then it's fine. I, we, we don't need to drag this out. <laughs> At least on my sheet it says there's no defense. I might be wrong. I'm sorry. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. Oh, no, it's actually part of, yeah, telepathy. Um, the spell itself, the only way that you know um, that, like, someone has cast telepathy on you is if you're either a mage or a witcher, if you have a way to detect magic. Otherwise, oh. you just hear the sound in your mind. I hate that. Um, okay. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. We, we will have a conversation about this, I'm sure. Uh, all right. It's a shady conversation. Focus, crystal staff, target location, random none. Submit. All right, 28 to, to loop it together. Uh, it's a critical, so I, if you need me to, I can. It's fine. Basically, you hear Elona the same thing that Idric heard, but not as loud, not as overpowering. Uh... 
I hate that more. Um, and then, um, can I spend some more stamina to take another action and to try to like mentally intimidate it again? I'll say sure. Three points of stamina. Oh boy. Um, here we go. 14. There's always luck. (laughs) However, you've opened a conduit straight into the creature's mind. Oh, no. I'm gonna seduce it. No, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) One of these days, I'll get you to seduce a monster, Lauren. That would be... Strange to say. Seducing monsters work, okay? I played a ske- a a skeleton that seduced an ancient, like I think it was a black dragon. It yeah, works. But this okay. isn't really probably sentient. Um, Ilona, because you have the conduit into the creature's mind, you know yeah. that whatever whatever you say, it's bound to hear it. Um. Okay. Uh, so did I notice that when I yelled at it, because it's, yeah. it's going to... You didn't gonna... notice it the first time, but now you did, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rita wants somebody to play with her. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, I think noticing that it did that, she's just going to sing, like, probably an old Elvish battle song very, very loud and uh keep shooting it okay i'm just gonna do the creature's turn first because i forgot the creature oh right yeah because yeah uh all right so oh no it actually did play um the mist thing should have been uh during my turn and not chorus's ah. turn so that's okay uh lauren it's your turn okay archery do all the press all the buttons Hit it in the face. Hit it in the face. Face. Uh, Is that face enough? Wait, wait, wait. I have four more luck points. I know. I have so much. I put all my stuff in luck. Uh, I've been rolling a 20. When does my luck recharge? Every day or every session? Every session. Mm, No, I'm keeping them. No. Two. All right, but I'm doing it again because right. elf times. Mm-hmm. If anything, you are draining away its stamina. Um, do I have to roll another performance check? Um, do you want to keep trying to stun it? Yeah, yeah. So that's singing... why she's she's singing like an Elven battle song, real loud and. All right. Operatic. Are you singing using the telepathy? Or are you singing with your actual physical voice? I'm singing with my actual physical voice because I saw the sound affect it. All right. Um, but I feel like it would also, like, hear... I mean, because I'm talking out, like, I can't... My brain and my voice are, like, one instrument, so... Yeah, it's just for the purposes of telepathy, you have, like, an on-off switch... That you decide either if you, because I mean, you do think about the words you're going to sing. Can uh, I do the, both? Por que no las dos? Like, um, yeah, burn like three points of stamina, and you can do both. Okay, because I I don't think I would know how telepathy works or that I'm hearing these things, so like I don't know if I could turn it off necessarily. Sure. Um. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is roll a performance check for the, um. Okay. Audible one. All right. <laughs> and then... It's 21. Oh, jeez. Yep, it is still... Powerless staggering. against my... And now boy. for the one in its brain. Oh, um, yeah. I just have to hurt it in its brain. Yeah, you're going to hurt its brain uh, when I get the social combat page. Oh, I have it open. Um, oh, cool. Um, what do you want? A, the, a... the damage for 
Uh, intimidation. Uh, 1d10 plus will. Then you will deal 1d10 plus your will okay. in damage to that creature. Uh, I rolled a 10 plus... Uh, that means you re-roll your 10. Uh, okay. Uh, plus 8, so... 18... Uh, 23? Whatever you did has a very visible impact on the creature. You start chanting your elven battle song and you notice a second and a third leg peek out of the mist. You even start to see this, the, the torso, body, whatever it is of this creature, which is like in the shape of an ox, similarly covered in bark and moss. And from the top of its body, these long, elongated vines that look more like tentacles than, uh, you know, vines are like tiny and wiry. These ones are much bigger. Um, the creature seems to lack a face. Weird. But Ilona, you notice a giant maw sticking out of the front of it. Needle like a mouth? Like a mouth. Okay. Needle sharp teeth. Gross. With, um, there's just a, a hole leading into whatever's inside this creature that glows a soft, eerie blue light. No face, just mouth. Yep. Um, and on each wow. of its sides, it's got two wiry branch like arms that end in long claws. Gross. I hate it. All right, I think that's all I can do, so. Yep. Um, when you did that and you did your intimidation, the mist, and that's for everyone, you noticed that the mist sort of abated for a, a while. Okay. I'm going to follow what, uh, I forgot your name. For, I'll, Lady Alcina has told me, and I'm going to try and cast Yerdin in front of it. Okay, how does Yerdin work? So, let me just get out the spell. Yerdin All I know is how it works in the game, and it just makes this, like, this circle that makes them move super slow in it. It's a know. large magic circle on the ground around you. Anything that steps into the circle takes a negative penalty to speed and reflex, equal to the number of stamina you've spent until they exit the circle. Oh. Oh, and there's no... Oh. There's no defense. Oh. Well, that sucks. All right. Um, you cast Yerdin. You succeed. Um, Yay! How many points of stamina did you put into that thing? Um, so what's your vigor? My vigor is a three. Okay. So you can put three points of stamina in your um, spell if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Or you could go all the way to seven, but those four extra points will be taken away from your hit points and not from your stamina. I'm just going to keep it up to three. Three? All right. So it's yeah. got a minus three penalty on top of the minus two penalty it already has. So it's both the speed and... Speed and reflex, which governs, you know, dodging. Yep. So... so... I know, I'm, I'm pretty much... <laughs> you... It took, it took your whole turn, though, to rapidly conjure the runes for the Irden. Yep. So, like, I just followed what she said, and I put down the Yerdin. You are very close to the creature as you're done with your spell. Lady Elsina, it is now your turn. Okay, so with the mist gone, or just a beta for right now, do I see any weak points on this thing? Any sort of, like, you mentioned bark and branches. Is there any, like... It seems in it like plate armor where, where I could ja jab a blade into. It seems like whatever armor is protecting this creature would be the sort of bark that's covering it. Uh, there are places where um, the, the bark seems to detach itself from whatever flesh the creature might have. Um, sure. A bit like the chinks in a plate armor. Okay. If you hit it in the head, it's three times damage, by the way. Okay, how big is this thing? But the creature doesn't have a head. 
It has a mouth. It has to have a head. If you well, maybe if you stab it in the mouth. Um, you could try to so visually speaking or mechanically speaking, I should say, you could attack mm -hmm. one of the tentacles, one of the legs, mm -hmm. the torso, or the mouth. Okay. Or the arms. Okay, so I'm behind it. Yep. And listen, ba bag of snails, you sassy me in chat. I'm just looking for whatever. Um, <laughs> so there's a, there's a so, tiny fairy. So, so chorus, when you in this, like if you hit the head, okay. it's three times the damage. Okay. If you hit the torso, it's regular damage. But if you hit one of its limbs, it's half damage. Yeah. Okay. You call the that. shot, but you take a penalty. So. Yep. Is there like a stunt system in this game? Like the more crazy the stunt, if it works, the better the advantage? Uh, not really, but I mean, okay. I'm a benevolent okay. DM sometimes. Okay. Is there a tree above this thing? Like nearby at least? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. I want to try to climb up the tree and jump off one of the branches with my silver sword and try to stri strike it in the mouth. All right. Um, and you're stealthed. You were invisible. Uh, yes. So I'll say make an attack. This would have to be a strong attack. Um, sure. Because as you're jumping down and jabbing your sword or your jambia oh. in its mouth, it, it, you okay. have to go for the full effect. Okay. Um, okay. So, do not miss. So, <laughs> okay. I, I I'll say. All right. You were invisible. Uh -huh. So. Sorry. It just I don't know how the system works. So no, I don't it's okay. know. How all right. Combat. So what I'll do is I'll remove all the penalties for headshotting. Okay. You still take a minus three penalty to your attack roll because you're making a strong attack. Okay. Um, but otherwise. Go right ahead. The creature will try to dodge, but I mean, you were invisible, so it's it's got penalties. You also, um, it's also stuck in the Eardin circle. Okay. So. Okay. Gotcha. There's going to so, be a lot of penalties. So sure. All right. So, I do swordsmanship for this. Um. Yep. Swordsmanship. Okay. And then you say it's an attack. Okay. It's not an extra action. It no, is a okay. strong attack. Strong strike. Yeah. Okay. And then choose your weapon. Kitten, I'm streaming. I don't have time for this. Oh, I see the kitty. Stream kitty. It's fine. Target location, head, yep. or just ra ra uh, just do random? Or? Uh, say random because otherwise it'll put in the penalties, which okay. we don't want for this specific okay. attack. Do I get an additional mod because I'm above it? And well, I have the high ground. That's yeah. why I'm removing the minus six penalty you would normally that's, take. That, that's fair. So sure, sure. It, it's you so, basically have a plus six, if you will. So seeing the miss go, she's going to look up, grab one of the bran branches, climb up a good few feet, and dash off one of the more th uh, thick ones, bringing her blade up, stowing away her gem be 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 as she leaps and brings it down above her head, just blade glinting in the light. So, Please roll high. Oh, God. Is there luck points? I don't know what yes, that does. Yes, there yeah. are luck yeah. points. What is your luck stat? It's a three. So you have up to three points you can spend uh, to give yourself a plus one. So you can spend all three of them to boost your skill roll to 20, but that would be all of your luck for today. Or at least for this session. I don't know if I'm going to hit. Um, Take the risk. Take the risk. Yeah, oh, I'll spend all three, all three of them to bump it up to, to 20. All right. So it's a 20 against a DC of? Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah! yeah! Roll on that fumble table. So I have a... Give it to me. Um, 11 minus Yo. 2, that's a 9. Is that, you gotta is do that, so much is damage. That a crit? Is that that's a, a crit? Oh, that's a heavy crit. It's like over nine. 
so it so Koros, in this game when you mm-hmm. when you roll above a certain number beyond the opponent's DC, mm-hmm. there's different stages of critical, and if you get more than nine points, then their their target armor class or whatever it is, uh, it's like a bajillion points of damage, cool. and you hit the head, which is times three damage. All so right. the creature doesn't have a big enough fumble because I only rolled a two and it brought it down to a nine, so we're. Uh, yeah, we're good with that. Okay. okay. However, it's not a crit. No, no. Uh, th- then we're gonna check for crit, which okay. uh, in this case is a uh, seventeen against nine, so that's a plus eight. So that is a tiny crit. So you're gonna add a plus three Did to your he... damage. Didn't he add all three of his luck points though? Yeah, it's a twenty. Oh, that's an eleven. So that is a complex crit. I'm sorry. You're gonna add a uh, Koros a plus five to your damage. Okay. So roll your damage. So I go to my sword, my silver sword. Do I press mm-hmm. the button? If the three d six was already entered as the main damage, yes. Otherwise, you might have to roll it yourself. That's okay. I'll do um, silver three d six plus your um, melee damage bonus mm-hmm. and your um, and then the plus five. Okay. And I'll just put it in there for real quick. Sure. So. 15. All right, that's a 15. 15 times 3. Why is there a minus 2? What? Oh, yeah, that's a minus 2. Because I have a bonus melee (laughs) damage of negative 2. Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, Okay. And then. I'm, I'm fast. I'm not exactly super strong. So now what we do is we remove the armor. So okay. that would be a minus 10 to that damage. Okay. Um, but mind you, that 3d6 plus... Yeah, so you dealt 5 points of damage Okay. times 3 for... It's 15. Yeah, so 15 points of uh, damage to that creature. And mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, Jay is saying you need to roll on the crit table to see what kind of injury it gets. Oh, poop, I forgot that. Thank you, Jay, for killing my monsters in chat. Um, can you, um, Koros, can you roll a d10 for me, please? Sure. Uh, two. Two, Two and uh, each of them. Oh, and I have to make a stun save. Wow. Fractured leg. Hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. You hit it in the mouth. So I'm going to go with lost teeth. Okay. That, that's that makes more sense. The blow knocked out some of the monster's teeth. Roll a d10 to see how many teeth are lost. Okay. Seven. So uh, just I'll note it down because this is something that you can pick up after the fight. But you've knocked out seven of its teeth, reducing the DC to um, uh, resist the mist by three. You guys are just debuffing it over and over yes. and over. Can I spend stamina for a second action? Y- yes, but wait, I have to check if I'm stunned. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. It's sorry. okay. There's just a lot of things going on, and um, this is a very complex creature that I tried to, like, homebrew a monster. So, bear with me for a second. You're trying to kill us, is what you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't, don't so, kill us due to the stream, doggo. If, Look how adorable he is. If I roll a 10, I'm stunned. Well, I'm not stunned. You're just... Yes, you can now spend your extra stamina to... Um... Okay. So I want to make a, another attack with the blade. As uh-huh. I'm just coming down, like I go... Psh! And when, when I land, I want to try to bring the sword back up and try to swipe into its torso. All right. That cannot be a strong strike. Uh, that's, that's just okay. a regular strike. That's okay. Let's do it. And I'm going to try to dodge out of the way again, which hopefully with all the penalties I have, I might freaking be able to do something. 
No extra action, fast action, fast strike. It is an extra action, but it's okay. Oh, it, okay. It, it doesn't matter. Just okay. Press yes, 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 yes. Okay. <laughs> 51. You hit. It's not a crit, but you hit. Roll for that. Nice. And... And roll a... Good. Roll a d10 to determine the body part, since it's not a... Called shot. Eight. Eight. Your second strike lands on its. Uh, ba -ba -ba. It lands on its. I wasn't at the right on the right page. Oh, the leg that was right next to you. Okay. Yeah. So just push. roll for damage, and okay. then minus armor, and then half okay. of that. Okay, so, so 36. 36. And because of Wyvern, I'm going to add a plus one uh -huh. to this. That's a second strike. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ooh, that's not a lot. No, that's not good. Your your attack wasn't... You barely, you know, punctured the skin. It's You might have broken a piece of the bark off, but uh -huh. didn't deal much more than a scratch on it. That's okay. Okay, so fast question. Yes. Uh, can I use luck points in case I uh, to like lower my my stun roll? Because I I have to roll under a seven this turn. Uh yeah, you could spend a luck point to increase your well lower the die result on your stun save. Yeah. Okay. Thankfully, I don't need to. So uh, I'm s still hooked in. That's. Two more stamina down. Um, I'm actually going to cast a spell this turn. Uh, and since I see that it's made out of moss and bark, uh, I'm going to uh, incant uh, Ayen Ayenye, uh and my eyes just kind of burst into flames, and I hurl a ball of fire at it. All right. It's going to try to resist. Uh, oh, well, hang on. I think I actually have to hit it, don't I? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, because it can dodge, block, or use. Mm -hmm. So it's a spellcasting check on your part. Yeah. Okay, so spellcasting. Submit. Oh, oh, oh. I fumbled. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> down to nine. Then roll oh. again and subtract it again. No! <laughs> Uh, so, uh, happening. 14, 5. I, I rolled a total of 5 to hit. Oh, are you oh, kidding oh, me? Oh, are you uh, kidding what me? Is going I, wish, on? I wish I'd used luck. Wait, uh, okay, so it's a fumble, but you hit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I think we both just, like, trip into each other. I just, like, think we <laughs> both, yeah. Um, it's, it's, we're psychically connected, so I imagine that it's, like, I'm hearing all of these like animal screams in its primordial hunger, and I'm trying to keep connected. Uh, Alona, who is just beyond like angry and upset, as well as this creature. So I imagine there's just so much psychic interference happening right now that it's insane. And not to mention, it probably didn't help that I hit it in its head mouth. All right. It's just like Argh! you. You will succeed on your NA. Um, so that's 4d6, and it has a 75% chance of lighting the target on fire. But, you doing so, the magic goes off wrong. And you are going to take the same amount... Uh, you're going to take an amount of damage equal to the uh, fumble dice that you rolled. So you're going to take 14 points of fire damage and set yourself ablaze doing so. Okay. But oh. it's, it still goes off, right? It still goes off. All right, worth it. And <laughs> uh, so they take fourteen uh, points of damage as well, I guess. So we're just trading. You're uh, just trading slight. places. Yep. Yep. And one D one hundred. Oh, that's an S, not a D. Uh, five on the on the percentile dice. So it's caught on fire. Nice. It's a 75% to catch it on fire. So it's going to take five points of damage every turn on every body part. Um, 
Except that now that you're gonna see it, um, the bark and the moss and everything is not flammable. And while it does catch on fire momentarily, the fire abates very quickly. However, the 15, 14 points of damage you did um, was enough to uh, to um, deal... Kill it? You, no, not enough to kill it, but you dealt the damage. It was enough to go through the armor. Uh, sorry, I'm also looking at the fumble I rolled for that creature, uh, which is a, a 4, so no major fumble. It, it tripped over itself, but it kept its balance. That would be... Right. Um, Ariel is Edric, is, oh, Edric yes. is just like letting out a primordial yell of like pain as he's burning. Yes. And trying to keep concentration. Um, by the way, burning, you take five points of fire damage on each body part at the start of each of your turns. So I'm just saying, uh, stop, drop, and roll. Ariella, it's your turn. Wait, is. What? No, it's wait. Not the, it's it's the, not the monster's turn and yes. then my turn? Mm, I'm sorry. I got it reversed. It's the monster. Lady Elsina, you are right in its mouth. Oh, no. You are... Isn't it stunned, though? Isn't it stunned, though? Oh, yeah. Stunned means that there's a penalty to oh, hit. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. welcome to not D&D. &D. Yeah, this is not D&D, &D, folks. It is okay. going to open its mouth and bite. Take a bite at you like it did with hey. the mages. Oh, no. Is there a way for me to dodge the fuck out of the way? Yes, of course. So, yeah, in The Witcher, like there are four ways, three ways, four ways, uh, multiple ways to defend yourself. You can Ooh. either block, which is just take a, a weapon, an item, whatever, put it in the way. If you succeed, the item's going to take damage, but you're safe. Um, you can parry. Parry means Ooh. that you make a, uh, you would make um, uh, an opposed swordmanship test. And if you succeed, not only do you get, take no damage, but you also impart a, impose a penalty to that creature because you put it um, off, um, off balance. You can dodge or you can reposition. A reposition is like dodging, but way the fuck away. Like you're, you're moving away. You're essentially what in D&D &D terms you would call disengaging. Okay. Um, if you want to remain where you are and be close enough for another attack on your turn, that would be just either dodge. Uh, it wouldn't parry wouldn't work in this instance uh, because okay. there's no way to parry its mouth unless you plan on probably losing your sword forever. Okay. So that would yeah. be a, a d10 plus your dodge plus your reflex against my attack roll. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm. As soon as I see the mouth, I'm going to immediately try to, as it's moving toward, towards me, I'm going to try to slide it down into the side. So here we go. Those are rules. You want? You should just go completely inside and then attack it from within. Oh, God. <laughs> what is this, crit night? Yeah. I have a 28, so that's a small crit on you. Oh, no. I'm rolling for body part. That's a six. Okay. I hit you on your... Uh, six would be your left arm. Okay, I have eight arm SP on my arm. Good. That's damage reduction. Okay. So I'm going to roll the damage. Minus okay. your damage reduction, uh, and then half of that because it's an arm that's getting attacked and not your torso. Mm -hmm. Just be be glad. Um, it's that because when, once you see what I'm about to roll, oh, no. you might not enjoy it. Um, but... Oh! oh, yeah, plus three to that because it's a crit, so that's a 26. Um, so that's about, you, know, you really are trying to kill us. Oh, God. So, it's about 18. 26 minus 8, that's an 18, divided half by 2. Did I go to my health? That's, take... half, that's over half my no, health? No, wait, wait, wait. You take 9 actual points of damage. Oh, okay. But that's still a lot. That's yes, like it's half, still a lot. lot. Like a third of my health, so I just take that out of my HP? Yep. And I'm going to roll... She screams in pain. A D10, that's a 4. Um... And it sprains your arm. Anything that you do with your left arm is going okay. to have a minus two until it is uh, stabilized or treated. 
Uh, well, so much for using my Jampia. At least Witcher Swords are one-handed now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it left one of its tooth embedded in your arm. And that's mm. what's causing all the pain and the loss of motion. Also, because I'm not done, I want to roll a percentile die. If I roll under a 50, uh, Lady Alcina, you're also bleeding profusely from the wound. You are not bleeding from the wound. Does black blood do anything to this thing? It didn't drain your blood. Okay. It just bit what? in it. Question: Did the did the magical did the fire from my Inye go out, or is it taking fire damage? Uh, it, it's basically not taking any fire damage because it's got too much armor. To um, oh good. <laughs> that's uh, like I, I flavored it as your flame spouting out, sputtering out. But honestly, it's just because it's not gonna take any damage. Um, from being caught on fire. We go back to Ilona. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, <sighs> it looks tired. Yeah. So I noticed that that whatever I was doing in its head seemed to hurt more. Um, than because I can hear it like talking about how it's hungry and shit. Yeah. Uh, and probably going, ow, that hurts a lot. Uh, in, you know, yeah, like more intense. Yeah, like in monstery ways. Um, so, uh, I'm going to put down my bow. And, well, like, not like drop it or anything, but mm -hmm. put it down. I'm going to stop singing and I want to spend. Um, I, I want to, I want to hurt it with my brain. Um, and the way I attack is that I'm just going to, uh, I look at, I look at Kahir, um, and I just like, like silently in my mind, just scream in anguish and anger um, mm. and fear, just like bombard it with all of my feelings uh, and like just the silent scream that I have building up inside of me. Then, have you ever heard Bard, the stories about the Banshee, the Bianche. Probably. Bianche or something like that. I don't I'm remember. Probably how saying it's... some songs about like creepy ass ghosts. Yeah. Uh, this um, elf maiden who uh, died of a broken heart and just constantly wails for her beloved in the afterlife. Whatever scream you have in your mind is not unlike that of a Banshee. Make a oh boy. What which skill would you say would best represent under your empathy your um your relationship with Kikia? Um Let me look at the verbal conduct. Probably just straight charisma, because that's the befriend, like... Alright, so like then... Like, he's... Yeah. Good. He's my, he's my friend, I... Level 10 so, bond, like... Yep, alright, so... Make a... Yeah, he was the, the ally that you rolled with the... The thing, right? Was it? Ah, uh, yeah. Or was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Bound by bond. He... My backstory then make okay roll a d10 plus your empathy plus okay. charisma okay plus 10 oh my god okay so like plus 30 then <laughs> oh no <laughs> i mean roll the fumble Ooh, it's still 29 you could roll low on the fumble what is going on in this game i don't know what roll, the fuck? Roll a fumble die. Just please 
thought it'd be a one. It's okay. okay. It's a 23. I'm going to try to defend against it. But I, you guys have to remember, you've been hitting it pretty hard. So 23, so that's a plus 10. Plus 10, so it's a complex crit. Or, yeah, a complex A weird crit. social complex crit. Weird social complex crit. So um, for, your, for your damage, roll yeah. a d10 plus your will. Uh, okay. A d10 plus your empathy plus 5. Okay. And d10 plus... Plus empathy or will? Plus empathy. Okay. And um, you know what? Let's multiply it by three. Okay. Oh. Uh, 45. 97 plus five. That's 102. Oh, I didn't add the five though. So. So too much. If, so, so is that plus five times three? It's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's dead. As you let out your your silent scream, Idric, you hear it. You hear yeah, it. Yeah, because we're you're we're like we're like three way calling. And it hurts. You're all screaming right now. It hurts like hell. Idric, you're going to lose. Uh, so sixty points of stamina. What? The same damage that you dealt, but in his stamina, because it's not. What happens if I go to negative stamina? You fall unconscious. Okay, oh, so I'm fire. unconscious and on fire. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. The creature sways back and forth on its three giant goat legs. The tentacles just waving like algae in current. You. It doesn't fall over. With a silent scream and a gust of wind that disperse the fog, this creature, in a flash, transforms itself into an old, leather-bound tome. On the cover of which, Lady Elsina and Ariella, you notice eight red eyes in a circle. And we're going to take a break. I'm on fire. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. I'm going to look over and just like, what just happened? See us? Each look on fire. Golden Smothering and Michael. Edric, yep. I go, oh shit. I I'm going to run over him and try to put the fire out. You don't need to make a roll for it. Um, you you can easily pat the fire out. Well, actually, she does need to make a roll for it because he's on fire. Sorry. Oh, I see what you did. There. <sighs> that's that's how you. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I get it. I get it. He <laughs> he, he had already stopped and dropped, just not rolled. Um, so you roll him in the grass. You put out the flames, and you notice as you're doing so that Idric is barely breathing. He passed out either from the, well, probably from the flames or from the spell. Um, Idric, did you have hair before? I think so. Yeah, uh, I had some glorious, luscious locks, actually. Yeah, he, he has some really nice hair. Yeah. I have some really, really nice hair, Simon. Oh roll, roll a d10, and on a one, you've lost it all. Oh, please, I need, I need hair. No! 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 <laughs> it's all gone. It's all gone. Can I luck this? Can I luck my hair into existence? It's gonna regrow after a while. It'll oh. go back. Oh, I'm bald. Oh. But you don't know that yet. You're still unconscious. I'm still unconscious. Mm. Uh, you can, however, that's true. Um, within the next hour. You can regain a number of stamina points equal to your recovery stat. So I think you'll be up and about within the hour. Um, um, while this is happening, okay. yep, we'll move the camera to another couple. Ilona and uh, Unconscious Kahir. Yeah, well, I mean, if I saw... I, I She would have gone and checked on, on Kahir. Um, 
because he was on fire and stuff. But I guess if she saw that that Ariella was taking care of him, um, and when the when the whatever weird like when she stopped hearing the screaming, um, but yeah, so she she'll go over to to Kihir and um, like I don't know, make sure try and make sure he's okay that that he's breathing that. <laughs> You know. um, he is breathing faintly. The blow knocked him out uh, cold. Um, he's not dying, but he's very close to death. Oh my god! Can I do something to make it better? Um, do you have any first aid? If no. not, if not, you can still try a... Um, a check that would be uh, an education. No, no, first aid. What am I saying? First yeah, craft check? plus first okay. aid. Yeah. Oh, my craft is terrible. Craft is my dump stat. Um, um, um. I'm gonna spend all my luck. Um. To to make it a ten. Yes, Lady Elsina. When I see her rush over. Alcina's gonna grab the that's in her arm. <sighs> Look at it. And then walk over to her. It's like, I'm no healer, but I can help. Did uh, my 10 do anything? 10? It might. Um, but if Alcina wants to help you, she can add her role to yours. Okay, yeah. I mean, she'll take uh, Ilona will take the help. Um. So, since I have alchemy, and this isn't for like brewing potions, but I would assume that my character would have certain ingredients and stuff on her that would maybe, if possible, work as a smelling salt. <laughs> Mm, I can tell you what the ingredients for smelling salt are. Oh, okay. Um, it would take a bit longer, though, to uh, brew smelling salt. So in the immediate, um, are you are you trying to patch him up? He's bleeding from the back of the head. Um, we need to make sure he wakes up first. Um, because the longer he stays asleep, the longer... Well, the more likely it is that there's severe brain damage. Well, we have to stop the bleeding. Stop the bleeding first, yeah. Okay. So I'd um, say make a first aid roll for now, and I'll let you know about uh, everything else after. Okay. But it is uh, in the realm of the possible. Eleven. Hmm. Twenty-one total. Kahir will make it. Ugh. There's you no... can't kill him off stream. <laughs> no, of course. I wouldn't have done that. Of course I wouldn't. Um, but he's... Once he regains consciousness, he will be as good as new. Yay. Maybe, maybe with a mild headache. Um, but he's not going to regain consciousness unless... Well, either Steven comes back next week. Or if you want him to be, if you want Kahir to be awake, yeah, smelling salts would be a good idea. Um, and smelling salts require uh, one bar, one forward slash, and two backslashes. So that's two kalem. Um, I don't know what that is. It's no, I'm looking it up uh, to see if the elves among the party can do something. One. I can find rebus. anything. Yeah, that that's what I'm I'm looking at. I so have the names of the rebus and the uh, sheets. Oh, did you say backslash or? It's um. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, rebus. Rebus. And there's Calum. Calum. Two Calum. One rebus. One soul. One soul. Is that it? Uh, no. Sorry, it's not soul. It's uh, Quebreth. Quebreth. Basically, as an elf, and you can find easy, you can easily find uh, these things, Elona. You know that a mixture... Actually, I'm going to make, what's-his-face, Yorith. 
Yorinth, find yep. it. Yorinth. Who who was uh, curled in um, fetal position during the whole combat? Oh, poor out. boy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna ask him to find them because I don't want to leave Key here. I'll I'll find them. Just... The only thing. No, no, no. no. It, it, like elves need to. We, they don't we need to automatically roll. find it. Yeah. Yeah, there's only one thing. So he can find Celandine. Just so do fine. You, like tell her that her eyes aren't as good as elf eyes. Yeah. Oh. You would know that, um, Lady Elsina, that elves can just find plants like this. There's just one problem. The only plant that would um, be suitable for Calum would be either the Briona plant, which grows in mountains and sometimes is kept in uh, people's gardens as like a, a, a cute plant to have at home, or yeah. a green mold. That you only find in caves. However, Lady Elsina knows this. A vampire tooth could be substituted for Calum if you grind it into a fine powder. And it just so happens that Lady Elsina does have vampire teeth with her. I hold on, I have something. She's going to pull out this small little bag made out of black leather and open it up. And she's going to pull out a single long and sharp incisor tooth. It's going to hand it over. It's like, if it wakes him up. I don't know how to craft things. You're <laughs> yeah. the one who knows how to craft things. Oh. I'll work something up. It takes 10 minutes. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll fast forward a bit because it'll take Yorinth uh, a bit of time to find the proper plants. Um, mm -hmm. And during that time, you know, Idric will be able to awaken from uh, unconsciousness. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll start by um, with Lady Elsina. Can you just make me a an alchemy check? So a d10 plus crafting plus alchemy. The DC is 14. Yeah, you're good. So there won't be no problem with that. While Yorinth is off trying to find the ingredients, um, Ariella, Elona, Alcina, is there anything that you would like to do in this clearing? I want to investigate that weird book. The one with the eight red eyes. All right, you'll go to the book. Uh, Elona I is... I'll just ask everyone, and then I'll do, like, scene by scene, just so I can have them on my mind. So, um, Ariella with the book. I, just, I would just stay with Kahir and make sure he's okay, but I would ask about the book if, if I saw Ariella have, like, looking at it. I would ask to look at it. Sure. So, mm -hmm. Ariella, unless you keep anything secret, I'll figure that, you know, if I say anything, you can repeat it to, to the group. Yeah, I would, I would probably repeat it to the others. Okay. And I'm, I'm just... I'm going to do this like in a very careful way because I don't want to enact any bad stuff. Good. And Lady Elsina, is there anything you would do while waiting for it? I figure you're going to build up a small fire and put out your yeah. alchemy kit and all that, but is there anything else you wanted to do? Um, once I've gotten the fire go going and it's starting to smoke and I've gotten the vampire tooth crushed up and just way way waiting for uh the young elf um it's gonna take a little bit of um of of field, of field medicine and just gonna grab some wrappings roll up her or just take off her her get her get her get her get her gambeson um and roll up her uh uh, her sleeve. It's gonna start wrapping it around the bite, which is pretty substantial. <laughs> it's gonna look to Lona and say, "He will live. He is very stupid to do such a thing, but he is brave. Bought us enough time to make a plan. You did rather well." I don't know exactly what you did, but that singing of yours seemed to work. 
I don't know. It, I think I think Idric did something. I, I could hear him talk to me, and and that I could hear what what that thing was saying. It, it was it was hungry. I it was awful. I just I just screamed at it. <laughs> Sounds like a tele telepathy spell. Wizards know a couple of things like that. Magicians can bridge minds together. They can also find secrets that way as well. But do you know what it wanted? No, it just said it was hungry. I must apologize. She's gonna like take her teeth and like try to like tug at the bant the bant the bant the bant the bandage tight. Just gonna roll her arm. I was under the impression that we were after a different creature. It almost got us killed. You helped Yorith, and that was what you meant to do. So it's it's fine. He's gonna look at Lona. Look to Charis. It's gonna give her a long look. You care about him quite a lot. Ah, uh, yes, he's he's a good man. Hmm. Best one I've ever met. During that well, time, oh, sorry, I thought I that was the expect so as of a knight of Northgard. You have a tendency to be, especially in Toussaint, they tend to tend to be very um, storybookish. Mm, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm technically a knight of Nilfgaard, but you are. Uh, what? Uh, yes, there was a whole thing in Varonis. Um, you should tell me about it while while we wait. I'll tell you what ha happened to me. Oh, no, it's... i rather that part of my life be forgotten, honestly. It's better that people don't know where I am or who I am back home. Are you a criminal, then? No. No, quite the opposite, but... There are people who think I'm dead. And um, it's much better that way. It is your business. I will not try. And she goes back to making sure that the tooth is all nice and ground, that there's no little bits of chunks in there that can catch if he inhales and... And block his nose. Yeah. We'll pan the camera over to the edge of the circle of stone uh, where Ariella picks up this... I'm not picking it up! I okay, you're just looking at it. I'm looking at it to make sure that it's safe to touch it. Okay. And then I pick it up. Because I'm smart. Your medallion does not vibrate as you approach the book. Okay. It is... So yep, no, go ahead. So it's like not like magical or anything that would be... If like there was any magic to it, there is no magic left in it anymore. Okay, so it would be safe to pick up. Yep. Alright, so I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to look at the cover. Mm-hmm. And I see the, uh, does this circle of eyes speak, 
be familiar to me in any way from my uh, from my training? Not from your training, but from your recent experiences. Did we? See, did they see it? I thought it was just Kahir and I. Oh, it might just be Kahir and you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had no idea. That's true. So it doesn't tell you anything. It looks a bit like I'm gonna say. It looks like a symbol for a group, an organization, or a cabal, or cult, sect, what have you. It looks ritualistic in, in its design. I'm just going to slowly open the... Uh, what would happen if I opened the book? Well, Ariana, I mean... what, what is that you have? Uh, the, that relic to drop this, and I'm going to show her the cover with the symbol. Oh. Oh dear. What's uh, Ron Alona? Do you know something about it? I might. How so? After the hag, when I got scared and ran away, there was a clearing and there were eight well, well first there was one eight-eyed raven it was huge watching me and then i ran away and then and then there was eight one-eyed ravens all speaking at me do you remember what they said to you yes they, they said something about that one king um that that he had it coming or something and 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 that full test was next so that so i guess from what i'm hearing it looks like this group might be responsible for that king Yes, yes. They they call themselves the the circle of circle of eight. Is that is that what they you decided on? Yep, it's yeah. the circle of eight. The the circle of eight. Um. But it's strange the way the way. What's his? How 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 the, the way that Henselt was, was killed, it looked like Scoia'tael. And now the Scoia'tael have this book and... And, they, and Idruk had encountered them saying about this ritual, but he said that he wouldn't teach them about it because it was too dangerous. It must be connected then. I guess. But if King Full Test is next, would it be rude of us not to warn him? <laughs> I suppose if you warned Full Test, yes. Uh, I don't think an elf and a Nilfgaardian walking into Temeria would I guess not. be wise. <laughs> Saying that we've heard a murder plot, they would probably blame us for it. That would be a good point. I'm, yeah. I guess they would trust a witcher more if they had the right evidence. Um, not even then. How? You haven't exactly been on the road that much, have you? What? Do you what? Mean? People trust witchers even less sometimes, especially when it comes to such things. Then we'll need. To and we'll need to find a way for them to trust us then. With, but I I didn't think anything. I don't I I don't know if I. It just was all so strange. I don't. I didn't quite know how to handle it, and I didn't think I could trust Edric. And now. I don't, I don't know if 
we should ask Yorinth where he, where they where they found this book. And if you want, that's where when Yorinth comes back uh, with the uh, the flowers and says, "Oh, I I I heard my name." Yorinth, where did where did they find find this book? Oh, uh, y you mean uh, Aaron Wynn. Uh he, It was gifted to him. He said. Uh, about a few years ago, um, we, uh, that was, I'm not sure, um, he picked it up from someone, uh, a family member, I think, in Vizima. Vizima. Yeah, the Tamarian capital. Um, I think I think his brother was a librarian or a scribe or something, and that book was misplaced and it looked obviously magical, uh, and and he brought it. But Erinwen couldn't get it translated properly. He he kept trying to find the secrets inside it, and I don't know I don't know what he did, but obviously, and he looks at where the monster was a few moments before, and he shudders. This is obviously whatever happened. I don't know. I, I, it, it, he must have done something wrong. I can't believe magic could do this. From what it looks like, it's otherworldly and very dangerous. They shouldn't have messed with this. No, we'll they start shouldn't. just picking up the teeth on the mm -hmm. ground. But it looks like from what I'm seeing, it looks like all this is pointing to Vizima. Yeah, can I, can I like, can we read through the book? Does it say anything like... I don't know, nobody it opened it. it. I oh. wanted to open Alright, I'm just gonna, just gonna open it. Alright. Yeah. I'm gonna open it. As you open the book... You notice. A monster pops out. <laughs> no, you oh. notice on the side of the cover, uh, on both covers, it seems like something was ripped away. Probably that this book used to have a lock on it, and someone just ripped it out instead of trying to pick it or open it with a proper key. Um, when you crack open the book, it makes this. You know how very old books that haven't been touched in years crack? And then you can almost feel the pages fall off, detach themselves from the spine. Oh, did it all, do all the pages fall out? It, not, not much, but they are flimsy and they barely hold together. This book has seen a lot of Better wear. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I'm even, good with books like these. Huh? I'm good with books like these. They're all over in my school. Oh yeah, you guys have have plenty, and you notice even the leather bound, uh, the leather bound binding around the book is dry and cracked in many places. Inside the book are diagrams and words and notes in margins. Most of them are written in an alphabet you've never seen before. It is not elder speech. It is not dwarven. It is not. Nordic. Some of the notes are in Elder Nordling, Speech. What you were trying to say, Nordling, right? yeah. Uh, some of the notes were written in Elven, in Elder Speech, in some of the margins. Probably the um, translations or notes that Aaron Wen left behind trying to find out what this book is. Good thing I know a bit of Elder Speech. Um, and as you flip through the book, you get to the, um, you know, the very end of it. And inside the back cover is a small note written in Nordling. Ooh. Okay. But it seems to be a cipher. The alphabet you recognize, the order and the size of the words, they make sense, but it seems to be encoded, encrypted. It's written in a very delicate, and um, flowery handwriting. Okay. 
but right now it's just a jumble of letters. Alright. Hmm. Quite interesting. Idric, that's about the time where uh, you wake up. Uh, when... So, given the nature of how he went down mm -hmm. he, with the extreme kind of psychic strain um, that was he was putting on himself, Idric kind of wakes up in a haze um, and kind of just grabs his staff and stands up. And you can kind of hear him muttering to himself in, utter, in elder speech. I would understand. Yeah. Um, and all he's saying is, uh, my life for the white flame that dances on the grave of his enemies. Um, and he's just quietly, he walks over to uh, Kihir and casts magical healing. And then he walks over to um, uh, Lady Alcina and casts magical healing again, and then just sits down kind of blankly like a robot for a minute. I just look over and see him doing all this and go, Hey, rise and shine, Baldrick. There's no response. Yeah, just deduct the, um, the stamina from your sheet. Um, that coupled with the smelling salts, Kihir will be up and about in a few minutes. Uh, are you all right, Edric? Uh, what language are you talking to him in? Um, if he started speaking in Elder... Um, I mean, so, <laughs> Ilona doesn't actually speak very good Nordling. Mm -hmm. So I've just assumed that we've all, all been speaking Elder speech. We all speak Elder speech, so... I would, yeah, I would speak it to. to yeah, among yourselves, elder. you guys all speak elder speech. Oh. Uh, <laughs> do you, Ariella? Yeah, I have some elder yeah. speech. Okay, so I do. Yeah, I have like a, a one in elder speech. So. Hmm. Kind of broken, but yeah, there's no language barrier among the group. So yeah, if you want to, and plus it's your native language, Alona. Yeah. It's only fair that this is probably the tongue that you use. Most often. Uh, yeah, no, when you ask him if he's okay, uh, he just kind of looks around and his eyes are kind of glazed over and he has a bit of a confused look. And when he sees you, he just says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I felt something i i lost you I, I i could tell that you weren't there anymore um did i hurt you too yes it uh was a risk for the greater good and the white flame dances on the grave of his enemies. Um, Ilona will kind of like get up and go over to Idric and like grab his hand. Um, Idric, why are you saying that? I am. And then as you kind of like ask him that question, uh, his eyes kind of start to come into a focus. Uh, Elona? Yes. Uh, I th thought I th thought uh, thought I was in s school again at the Gleason Hall. Is it? It's okay. Uh, you're, sorry. No, no. I I'm sorry that I that I hurt you. Yeah, it was a risk. But I I felt the 
the alien nature of the creature and it heard from sound I did I didn't have time to ask permission it it won't happen again it's it's fine um, is it Lona is it breezy out I just hear him say that I'm gonna go over here I just like in a smirk motion because she's having fun with this girl I see you're starting to feel better there eh Baldrick oh yes um oh you have no hair I don't oh does anybody have a hat? Oh, it, it doesn't look horrible. No, no, it it you have your your head isn't misshapen at all. Uh, it's very distinguished. Hair grows back. Uh, yes, well, you know. Let's just say that this is probably some karma that you got. I, I think after we shave off all the burned bits um it will it will look better I, I, forgive me for interrupting this um talk of whether or not his uh, hair is of an amount but um why do you think that there's a murder plot about why what exactly have y'all been up to I told you why I think there's a murder plot plot about there were strange one-eyed birds who told me that they planned to murder a king and that they had murdered another king. Idric, um, this book, what can you tell us about it? I'm still holding the book and I didn't yeah. show him the cover. Have I seen this book before? Is this what, what the, uh, you've the seen, elf showed? Yeah, you've seen the book a year ago. You hadn't seen it this close before. But you mm-hmm. do remember the circle of eight sort of fake gemstones that look like eight eyes. Uh, yes, this is the book that the that Yoren's friend showed me. And I... It contains theories for, like I told you before, creating a small conjunction of the spheres. Isolated. But it's hypothetical. It's, um... It would take a mage of skill far greater than mine to pull it off. I mean, last I saw at least a year ago that it was all conjecture and, uh, uh, hi- hi- hypotheses. Hypotheses. I could study it if you wanted. Um, after a nap, maybe. Well, according to our elf friend over here, they got this book from a relative in the Hmm. There and uh, could be a lie. I know you are uncomfortable with such things, Alona, but we could ask Yorunth directly after we rest, given the, um, the nature of what he summoned. It might, it might be, um, it might be best I would not see my my brethren treated such and I would not see any more horrors brought onto this spot there's a s- to be done. there's a soft voice from behind all of you that says well maybe we can just go to Vizima and try to find this relative Hi, Alona. I think I took a nap. This is my best Stephen impression. I know, it's very good. It is very good. Oh my god, I thought it was actually someone else that snuck up on us. 
Uh, Kiki, you're all right. I will live. Good. Yes, Vizima might be a good place to go. Yorinth, did you know the name of of this Awin's cousin? Um, Yorinth says, I, I um, no, uh, but I know uh, uh, Aaron Wynn kept mentioning that he was uh, an astrologer. Or, or, or some such in, in Vizima. I, there shouldn't be that many. Um, I would really like not to be here anymore. Ever. Perhaps you should go home. Uh, after you show us where the cash is, we can probably sleep there for the night uh, oh yes uh, c- come with me and he guides you through the woods to like outside of any beaten path um, it is so far removed from any traces of civilization that you could easily just get lost if you didn't know the way. Um, the cache itself is hidden, uh, dug underground. It's, it's a, he he has to dig it out. These like sacks of um, um, like coarse linen. Um, this uh, bundle of wool that's just attached by um like a, a simple leather string uh, there is the sound of something metallic inside um and he uh he also gets a small like foot locker type of chest and he pulls it up it takes about an hour or two um to do all that and by the time he's done uh, the sun has set on the woods So yeah, what's in what's in this cache? Lots of things. I want a sword. Is there a sword? There might actually be a sword. There might actually be more than one sword. Um, to start with, let me just. Oh, is 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 I Alona would have gone to get um, uh, Kahir's like nice Vicovarian sword as well. Oh yeah, it fell. Like I assume that you guys would have picked it up after the fight. It fell on the ground when the yeah. creature was killed. Uh, I'm not gonna be that kind of DM. And just like, no, 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 you didn't say it. You lost it. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Steven lost everything he ever wanted. Um. You. So I, I assume you also picked up the seven teeth that were broken. You can split them amongst uh, yourselves. Um... Yeah, I think uh, 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 Alcina picked them up. All right, they count as. Um, I'll just do, get that out of the way first. Um, they count as a specific ingredient, which is. Uh, I should have written it. I was like, oh, I'll just remember it and I'll find it again. Is it Fulgur? Nope, it's actually... Ah, the... Yeah, there it is. Uh, it counts as the uh, ingredient soul, the one that's just a vertical bar. You'd have seven of them. Now, as for what the cache contains... The sack has 500 crowns worth of money in various uh, various currencies, but for all intents and purposes, we'll say it's 500 crowns. Um, it's easier that way. The bundle of... 
sheepskin of wool. Yeah, I should have said sheepskin because it's more sheepskin than just wool. Um, has a few weapons in it. You find two daggers. You also find... I just need to roll up. Thank you. Um, so two daggers. There is one elven messer, which is an elven sword. A, a sort of one-handed, um, slightly curved, kind of scimitar-ish sword. Mm -hmm. um, there are two axes, um, battle axes, I should say. One arming sword and a uh, broken spear. So, like, it, it counts as arrows? a spear, but without a, um, without the reach, um, quality. Um, arrows, sure, in the footlocker, um, because it would make sense. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just getting low. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. Um, let's say you find 20 arrows in that chest. Ha, ah, perfect. I take them. <laughs> I also want the elven sword. <laughs> and you also find in the footlocker. A few alchemical solutions. Ooh. Yep. There are two vials of acid. One vial of chloroform. One pouch of fistec. Ooh. And Rad. two doses of numbing herbs. And lastly, you find a pair in that footlocker, a pair of bracers made of hardened leather and covered in steel scales. These, um, these bracers, uh, they would grant, they basically grant four, like they have an SP of four, but only for the arms, not for the torso. It's like arm armor. All right. So yeah, are y'all okay with with me taking the sword? Yeah. My elfie, my elfie sword. Take that sword, girl. The sword is on page eighty-three. It's the Thank first one. you. So yeah, you've got the bracers, you've got a bunch of other weapons, arming sword, two battle axes, a broken spear, uh, and then the alchemical items. And two daggers. Uh, Idruk is going to kind of go... Th I'm assuming we split up the money, like, immediately. Um, Probably. So, uh, Idruk is going to, like, count out 75 crowns worth of, of uh, stuff... And uh, he's going to put it into a little sack and he's going to walk over to Alona and say, uh, and, and just like offer it to her. And it's like, um, this is the, uh, the the rest of what I owe you and uh, Kahir. After okay. this, you're paid up and um, can leave without um, worrying about being cheated. You were asleep. I think whoever has this book, um, they might be looking to kill Foltest next after Enselt. And I know Kahir will want to see this through. But, um, what makes you think he's, they're going after Hensel? Uh, as a full test? Because they told me, and she'll tell the story of the, the, the story. story. Of the, yeah. yeah. Which, Alcina, you hear all of it as well. Uh, then I think our paths stay converged a little longer. 
Um, oh, Ilona. Yes. I don't want people to suffer. Um, the way that I have suffered, I, I tried to ki kill those men because I th thought they would make others suffer. Um. It, I need a favor. Uh, when she's when she's talking, like Ilona will um, unclasp the back of her dress a little bit. I'm assuming they're like off, off in a corner, like we we've made camp. Yeah, you've made and camp where the cash was. Yeah, and she'll she'll like take off, like she'll she'll kind of like reveal her shoulder blades to. Edric, um, and you see uh, Lichtenberg figures um, on her on her shoulder blades, like from lightning strikes. Yeah, but these ones are still there, and they look old and raised, like scars, like burn scars. Um. I don't want a mage to hurt anyone the way this one hurt me or the way the one who killed Kiki's parents did. But will killing every mage that I see, even the violent ones, will not solve that. Will you and Ari help me not become that? I don't, I don't want to hurt people. You know, I just, I just want to live and love. And she'll like start to fix her dress up again. Yes, I will. Yeah. Uh, good. Um, I need to see if I can find a hat. And I'm and and he just kind of kind of busy himself trying to find a hat. Or something, or like a, a cowl, or a cape yeah. Or actually, a actually, uh, Ilona will be like, wait, wait, and um, like take out, uh, I guess, like take take her take out her dagger, um, and say, let let me help, and she'll start to kind of like because when you burn your hair, it doesn't just like burn off and you're beautiful and bald again. Like that's not how it works. No, there's like tiny bits of hair. <laughs> there's like chunks and yeah. stuff. So she'll like try and clean, shave you clean off. up, like shave his head as, as best she can. Edric, you can also take the sheepskin, put it on your head and use the leather string to tighten it. And it would look like a, <laughs> a sort of like kind of hat, kind of a like shepherd's. I'll wait till I can buy a, ca a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all in camp. You went off uh, to discuss this. Ariella, Alcina, uh, that leaves both of you uh, next to uh, the campfire. Kahir is busying himself fixing his armor and sharpening his blade. I don't know if you want to say anything, but both witchers can just remain in perfect silence. Stare I mean, at that's the flame. a very witcher thing that's to do. That's a very, wi yeah. yeah. We both have no emotions. Mm -hmm. It's nice out there. Eh? Yeah, it is. Cool. <laughs> that's the perfect 
problem. Like, you can't really find good opportunities, and it's just so emotional. Wasn't sure I was going to live for him. Is there a story of that one? Do I, you want to know? It would be pretty good. It would be pretty interesting. She kind of leans over the fire. And... Kind of watches it burn for a little, little bit. Then she takes the pot of water and herbs that she was concocting and puts it over it. It's my first hunt. No, I saved my first hunt. But the first one alone. I was in one of the... I was in the North Guardian capital. Looking for work. I don't know much care for peasants. I find the nobles and rich people are much easier to deal with. They may not like you, but they're less liable to send a mob after you with sticks and stones. I've had my fair share of that. I was... Herding rumors of people going missing near one of the bridges at night over one of the canals. And I was approached by a young lady. She said that she needed my help. Now before this I had deduced based on the reports of the dead and there was some sort of vampire. And this lady said that she knew where it was and needed my help. Needed me to track it down. So I went with her looking and we found it. It wasn't like these smaller ones, these misshapen monsters. There was no illusion magic and no mist. There was a man in a suit with long boots and fine clothes. And my witcher amulet wasn't going off. I thought this was some sort of joke that they had entreated me into something odd, maybe illegal. Turns out he was the vampire. I've never seen a vampire or heard of one like this. This is... It moved too fast. It was like smoke. 
It was smart. Smarter than me. And it could morph itself. It could move its hands and create talons as sharp as swords. Gutted me right here. Just the whole hand. I've never felt pain like that. That must have been quite the experience. I'm only alive because the lady turns out that she was interested in this one and Apparently, he had done a good job of maintaining his human life, but had recently gone berserk. She tried to stand in his way and plead with him to calm himself, and he killed her. But it gave me enough time to get in a good slice. As you're talking, Lady Alcina, your potions are ready. <clears throat> you've you've brewed enough for uh, the party yourself, and mm. probably Yorinth, if you wanted to give him one as well. Yeah, it's like friends. If we're gonna get some sleep, you should probably drink some of this. It should help with any headaches, especially telepathy based. It should help. Dull some pain left over from burns and scarring. And help you sleep. And she starts like scooping up some of it, puts it to her lips. You didn't have the right ingredients, so it doesn't taste as sweet as it normally tastes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, it's, it's just a bit too sour, but. Well, can't always be perfect. This is why I stay in the cities. You can find everything you need there. <sighs> need the look. I have a question before we head to bed. Yes. May I speak with you alone? Uh, if you, if you wish. As they pass, um, she is going to pat Alona on the shoulder. And that voice of yours is going to tell quite the tale in this card. What? Uh, what do you mean? You heard her sing. Enough to cow a fiend. I think that's enough for a song. Don't you? Yes. Likely. And she pulls him aside out of hearing. It's like you said that there, you and your friends seem to be in a lot of trouble. You all could come with me. Forget all this northern business. Forget all these assassination plots and whatever nonsense. And ride with me. Nilfgaard is safer for you. <laughs> What's so funny? I never told you how I got these scars, did I? I was born in... In Edern, Alcinia. I was found as a child and uh, I went to Gleason Hall where I escaped and wanted in Nilfgaard. Is 
and he just kind of points to the numerous like scars and then specifically to like these kind these very like uh strange looking ones that are almost like raised burn scars around his neck that don't quite make a full circle were lessons that I uh, that I learned that I was taught I have heard rumors still I can if you would desire I can see about getting the charges dropped uh, I think uh The only way people will learn not to hate us is if we show them not to. We can't all flee to Nilfgaard when the going gets rough. There is war coming, Yedruk. The not Northerners to... are not going to change their ways in enough time before the war starts. And when yeah. it happens, they will get scared. And when peasants get scared, they go after witches. They go after elves. They go after mages. And you and your friends, and they will go after Nilfgaards. Like this night here. When you and your friends are a crew that is ripe for mobs, back alley skirmishes, and blades in the night. For all of Nilfgaard's faults, for all the things it's done to you, and I'll make no excuses for it, it wouldn't be safer for you and your friends. I won't be a war if I stop it. You talked of dead kings. What proof do you have of this? Besides birds. I pull out uh, King Hensult's ring and I hand it to uh, Lady Elcina. This is a signet ring. This is the Caedwin Crest. Yeah, I was gonna say, can you make an education check? Oh, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, A d10 plus your um, intelligence plus your education. Sure, give me one sec. And um, in the background, uh, as you do that, there is also Ilona who's practicing sword fighting on a tree. Okay. And she apparently critted. Or that's uh, the number. Sorry. Of that's okay. I was just trying to figure out a sheet thing. Mm. Um, actually, yeah. Eighteen. Yep, this is, you've seen it on official state papers before. Um, it is, if if not the ring, a very faithful reproduction. You've had this the whole time. Have I, you done, done anything with this? I, Idric shakes his head and says... I uh, I tried to destroy it, like I destroyed his corpse. He, mm -hmm. I was uh, going to throw it in a river, the first chance I got, but uh, uh, th th <clears throat> there has not been an uh, opportunity. She looks at it. There's a lot of mischief you can get up into with this. A king's signet ring, especially if word hasn't arrived yet. There's a lot no. of things you could do with it. It is... It is getting dis disposed of Al. We can't, we can't risk it getting traced back to us. That's fair. And uh, he'll hold his hand out for the ring. 
She looks at it, looks at you, kind of in an exasperated, like, I can't believe you even have this look. Just shrugs and put it back in your palm. I was going to say, you're going to have to make a uh, resist magic check. As you hear the voice in a voice in your mind that says, "I see you." <laughs> oh, what? No, it's, it's the just, one ring of Sauron. One. <laughs> no, no um, you just, on, yeah, on, you, you drop the ring back in your hand. Fake. Uh, oh, you chug it in a volcano. <laughs> Frodo, no. We, we have to go to Nilfgaard, not Nilfgaard, uh, Novigrad. I'm planning to throw it into the river on the way. I would appreciate it if you did. If you did. If you didn't tell anyone. You won't tell us all. If four people s- stop this war. A mage, a witcher, an elf, and a knight of Novigrad. It could change the way Nordlings think about us forever. We we save full test. We save everyone. If if war comes, my friend, I will be on the front lines healing the people hurt. You always had your heart on your sleeve. I'll give you that. I, uh, I pat I pat you on the shoulder and I say, I am sorry for the lies. I was still learning who I was. We all tell lies. It is human. (laughs) Are we, though? And she looks at herself, looks at the scales in her hands. I like to think so. And I think that's where we're going to end the scene. Good. All right. Uh, Ariella and Ilona, you wanted to have a scene before we finish today's session. Um, so, of course... Alcina and Idric have gone away from the fire for a bit and um, leaving the two of you together alone. Yeah. Uh, Ilona's like looking over her new sword. Um, and uh, what what's Ariella? Do? Is Ariella like watching after Idric and Elchina? Yeah, Excuse I'm just, me, like, I, I just see Idric leave and I'm just like, I hope he's in my, in my mind. I'm just like, I he better come back before soon or not before dawn or I'll kill him. Uh, yeah. So she's going to take a look at that. And I, I mean, I, I don't think I need a role for that, uh, <laughs> body language check. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah. And she's going to say, you know, that time you, uh, warned me against Adric. You could have just said that you uh, wanted him and I would have, you know, let you at it. You didn't have to, like, you know, pretend it was for my own good or whatever. It's kind of complicated. I can see that. But, I mean, look, I just... I'm just looking for a good time. I can find that anywhere. Yes, you could. I've had my fair share of good times. But some men 
some women. All the same, it, really. Idrick is more than a good time, though. He's different from people I've met. For some reason, he cares about my well-being. I remember the first time he did it. We were in a tavern. Some people came up to me telling me that I was a freak and stuff. Just yelling at me. Just because I was a witcher. Which is something that I was always used to. Egypt actually took offense at that and started a huge bar fight. It I is nice when the Dwan stand up for you, isn't it? No one has ever done that for me before. Maybe that's why I got really mad when I found out he liked me. I've never liked liars. But I think mm. in, a, in a way, inside it hurt that he did that. Yes. Well, it seems you've begun to make up for all of it. You seem to have forgiven him the other night, at least. He said words that I wanted to hear for so long. That, that all my feelings just wanted to go. Well, he... He is trying to be an honorable man. And that is more than we can say for most. That, that is true. <laughs> Are you going to be okay after all that's happened? <laughs> you mean All of these monsters. I just meant your fight with the relic. I... It didn't hurt me. It never tried to, to get anything and... I was... trained to fight. That's why I left home. Did not want to be the warrior that. That they expected me to be. And I told them that I could change the world with my voice rather than my sword, but... In a way you did accomplish that. Perhaps. And she looks at her new, very nice, I just looked at the stats, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very nice sword. Um, How good are you with the sword? Uh, I'm all right. It's been... A long time. Kihir's teaching me. We had to sell my last sword for food, but anyway, it seems like my voice can kill monsters just as well as a sword can. At least with Edric's help. Yeah. It seems that way. And with that, oh, were you done? I, I was done. I had to say. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Okay. And with that, the party goes to sleep. I don't take the drink. I don't take the sleeping potion. By the way, Those... I just meditate. <laughs> yeah, 
those that do, um, if you drink it, you'll get a plus one to your stun save for the next day. It is, it's like a tea. Should have been something like ginger tea, uh, but without the ginger. So Alcina had to make do. Um, she's going to stay up a little bit. And it's going to say, like, at, le at least I'm going to be leaving in the morning, but at least I need to, just in case you decide to come to Nilfgaard, I want to make sure that you have a pass, and she starts writing. Mm -hmm. Well, you notice Ariella uh, begins to meditate as they do. She's the one keeping watch, basically, because she's aware of everything okay. around herself. Um, and... Um, Ariella, you hear like the scribbles on paper like overnight. And uh, you hear Alcina, you know, get up, go through her things, and then at some point lie down. And the next morning, hello, Kitten. The next morning, um, she's gone. Did she take Yorinth with her? Um, if you want, Alcina. That might be preferable for Yorinth because you wouldn't have to travel alone. Can, um, you, can you please take care of my sweet elf boy? <laughs> yeah, I'll take him with me. Thank you. Um, but yeah, before like the first... Get him to Dolblathana. <laughs> yeah, it's... I mean, sending Yorinth or alone, something. unarmed, unarmored, scared in the woods might not be the best thing. Uh, if, if nobody wanted one of the daggers, Yorinth is going to take one <laughs> as protection. Yeah, it's fine. You can take it. Yeah. I was uh, going to plan on taking all the weapons we don't need, or we're just going to sell it. Yeah. yeah I'm, I I'm think gonna... we should save some for... Uh, I, I gave the list to Steven, so if Steven wants anything. Sure. Adric? <laughs> uh, it, it, we can go over this later, so I'm, I just was going to grab a dagger for myself as well. Yeah, sure. So grab one. There yeah. was one. Um, and so when everybody wakes up, um, there is a note... Uh, sticking out of Idric's backpack. Uh, I will open it up and read it aloud. Right. As you open up your backpack, you notice that there are five monster teeth. The ones from the dark one of the woods in your bag. Mm -hmm. And the note reads, Idric, I'm sorry for this. I hope you and your friends stay safe. But I have taken something. The ring is too useful <gasps> to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. I... This is partly selfish. So I will not lie to you. With this, I can go to the Emperor himself. And with this, I can bring back my school. I can bring back many things. If you ever decide to come to Nilfgaard, there will be a place here for you. I'm sure there will be some land or some nonsense, but... I wish you the best of luck. Attached to this note, I have written you and your friends, just in case you do decide to be smart and go down south. A writ that will announce you as a friend of, of a knight of Nilfgaard. Yeah, four writs, one for each. Each one bears their name. Itruk, yours has a different name. I do not know how long it will may take me to convince the Emperor to wipe away your crimes. But just to be on the safe side, just make sure that you use the name when you're crossing the border. What's what's the name on mine? It says um it says Baldwin. <laughs> Baldwin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Sir Baldwin right. of Alec. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Idra just kind of looks up and goes, I was waiting to throw it into the river by Novograd so it would be swept to sea. <sighs> Shit. You showed her the ring, didn't you? She wanted the proof. I t- t- trusted her. She s- saved my life. I s- saved hers. You're freaking idiot. It is out Not of our hands, hands, at least. Look, it's fine. It, it, it can't be tied to us. If anything, it will be tied to her. Then we what don't. Will happen to her? I don't. I don't know, but here's hoping they never find the remains of Hensel's corpse. I'm sorry, Ilona. I wanted us to throw it together as a symbol of friendship. Um, and just as he, Idrik is just going to start like packing things up and uh, he's, I'm just going to spend a point of, uh, of, uh, of stamina to cast telepathy on Ariella. Uh, and the last thing I want to say is just, I love you. I'm so sorry. <gasps> And I think that's when we're going to end tonight's episode. Because, wow. (laughs) Did we just freeze frame for real? (laughs) I think everybody just kind of freeze framed. I I didn't mean for that to, uh, you know, to, to cause everyone's brains to explode. I mean, I was fro- I'm frozen. Like, you're, y'all, y'all are bad at, or you're all, y'all are frozen. But I was also. Oh, you mean you were frozen, as in your internet was frozen? Yeah, my internet was frozen. <laughs> I thought, I thought you were just very, very still. No, no, my internet was frozen. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. <sighs> Cool. You guys, I have a really good sword. It's like a, I think you just broke Jillian, but like my sword is sweet. It's a very good sword. I like how Kahir is, um, uh, uh in, well, not influencing, but, uh, like you can feel the Kahir in what you just said. Like, hey, I have a, I really like my sword, regardless of everything that's happening around. Like, holy shit! I didn't guys, hear that. It? It's a ri- look. Julian was broken. Uh, I'm a little broken too. But like, let's talk about how good my sword is Your and sword how you all awesome. just let me take it because I was like, I want the elf sword, and they were like, Sure, she's an elf. Except in this game, all of the elf stuff is way better than <laughs> way better than the sh- shitty human stuff. <laughs> It's it's actually pretty much the same damage as a two-handed sword, but on a one-handed sword. Three D six plus four. And you have a plus two to hit. Ah, uh, yeah. No. No, it's it's sweet. It's not quite like a meteorite sword or a no. tier to care or whatever, but it is. It is. And a... it's also not as good as Kahir's sword already. No, so. but Kahir's sword is two-handed. Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's a weird sword and a half bastard sword type thing, the Vicovaren blade. Um, still, it's yours. Y- shape wise, yours is the shape of like a D and D scimitar, so it's not that long. It's slender, but it is goddamn deadly. I figure she probably would have trained with like something similar. Oh yeah. Way uh, you, back you when. Definitely. I think we should when talk about this over uh... was a baby. Yeah, we're going to have to, because we're going over. Um, yep. 
we can we'll talk about it in the green room after the sorry the i'm just okay. really excited about this sword well good it's very good i don't hand out loot often enough um let's just go around the table um tell us everyone uh, tell everyone who you are where we can find you on the internet i think we'll start with our guest tonight um Koros. I think you mean the traitor hey guys let's <laughs> the see. traitor there was an opportunity, and I wasn't about to let you throw that away. Yep. Oh, how like, how did if you, you enjoy that? I'm helping you in this scenario, 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 scenario. You didn't even want the ring. It's true. And there plus, a... like, I mean, who, who are you, you traitorous? Yeah. Who traitor? are you? Did you I... did you enjoy playing the Witcher? Yes, I did. I. I like the Witcher stuff, and it was nice to finally play in a game like it. I'm so glad that you guys had me on for the second time. Thank you guys for being an awesome crew. Yay. And Manny with the mic drop, like Jesus. Bag of snails. Crazy, man. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm Bag of Snails. And uh, apparently, I, I I dropped the microphones. Uh, <laughs> before I, I go into my long laundry list of things that I'm doing, is there anything you need to plug, Koros? Oh, yeah. and yes. if you want to, uh, the players, you can put in chat any links to like your social, to your Twitch page, to whatever. Well, thing is, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter um, at Koros RPG. I tend to talk about D&D and TRPGs and fantasy and all that nonsense. And I'm thinking about starting streaming some Magic Arena, so that should be interesting. Yes. But besides that, you can find me on Sundays at the Soul Bear RPG channel. I am so sorry. Excuse you, dog. I am talking. <laughs> you need to be quiet. Sorry. Um, don't you sass me. <laughs> He's very talkative. I'm sorry. Okay. Why don't you mute yourself, friend? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to get that. I'm sorry. Um, but on Sundays on the Soul Bear RPG channel, I run a D&D 5e game where I run Wandering DM, Kika Vio, Chris Greer, and Deirdre Dawn Lawn uh through a roman greek mythos inspired sword and sorcery homebrew game that i run it's very meat grinder -y. in fact last week uh simon's character just fucking died like just got stepped on once and just instantly took like 43 damage and he had 15 hit points i had the best last max. words though how like, how much gonna, how much did you gonna, deserve it <laughs> well 100 percent <laughs> he was okay so i did the thing that i shouldn't have done like what are you gonna do step on me and he was like yeah psh. so i challenged up yeah i wasn't anyway it's all worth it and you can catch the video on the band on soul day rpg mm -hmm. and it's at 5 p.m on sundays but not only that, um, while Wizards and Road Robes has ended on Tuesdays, you can find me on Thursdays at 8 p.m. for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, where I'm playing with Lauren in a very interesting game where I play Sir Goblin Moonstar, Paladin, Knight, an all-around wholesome boy. Is he really, though? Is Really? Yeah. He is. He's very paladin y. Yeah. All right. I just wanted an outside opinion for this. <laughs> um, and Manny. Hi, I'm, I'm Manny, aka Bag of Snails. This is my puppy, Nova. Uh, I apologize for him. Um, mm -hmm. And you can and find me at Twitter at the at the, the at above. Um, <laughs> and you can find me here on Twitch. Uh, at uh, Bag O Snail, so one word. And on Wednesdays, I'm currently running Scion Anti Heroes. Um, we're doing pre recorded eps until January when the new season starts. Um, can't wait to like announce the name for that one because it's going to be great. Um, and let's see, right now, stuff is kind of going on hiatus for me. So, other than uh, until January, so other than here, you can find me. Uh, 
uh, on Sundays at Laura Lania's channel um, at like 10 in the morning Pacific time uh, for Path of the Demon Lord, a, uh, a, a, a game that's hosted by, uh, run by uh, Pro Restarter. And you can find me, Chris, weirdly Christmas Day, we're, we're, we're going to have a pre-recorded episode of Monster Hearts Up. So uh, thank you. Uh, that's it for me for today. Jillian. I'm broken right now, but hi, my name is Jillian. I'm known as Cheaper Gaming X on Twitter, and I'm known as Cheaper Gaming One on Twitch. I sometimes do Twitch right, play a for variety streams on my channel, and you can also find me on Tuesdays at around like 2 p.m. EST on the RPG Lab for the all female cast of the Inquisition, where there's bloody trees and a very awkward moment with mushrooms. So there's that. Yay. Uh. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Lauren. Hey, it's me. I'm Lauren. Um, uh, yeah, I'm JL underscore nice girl on Twitter. I'm writing lots of notes because lots of crazy stuff happened. Um, I uh, play lots of games. My schedule is outdated right now. So let's see how fast I can do this. Okay. Bi-weekly on Mondays. Uh, I am on Off the Table, twitch.tv slash Off the Table, playing Tales from Thersha, which is Grimdark D&D 5e. Uh, every Tuesday, I am back here on Wandering DM, uh, playing Star Wars Points of Light, which is D&D 5e, but Star Wars themed. Our season finale is next week. Or this coming Tuesday. Uh, there are Ewoks. It's it's good. It's crazy. It's fun. Um, a lot of reveals for the finale. I'm not excited about that. Uh, they're gonna hurt. Uh, <laughs> uh, on Wednesdays, I do nothing. Oh, also biweekly on Tuesdays, I release a podcast called Too Many RPGs. Um, we're on hiatus right now, but our episodes are coming back on uh, in January. It is a show where we talk to creators and fans of actual play about the shows that they love and why they love them. Thursdays, I am on Grimjack 2 on 502 playing Garnet, the rogue on Dungeon of the Mad Mage, also Sir Gorbrin's uh, employee, um, where I get to sass him a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> and on Fridays, I'm here. And this coming Sunday, uh, Simon and I will be on uh, twitch.tv slash pro restarter for the long awaited uh, finale of, uh, of Cloaks and Acorns, our Mouse Guard campaign. Um, it's going to be really good. It's going to be really sad because I'm sad Mouse Guard's over. Uh, and check that out. Where I play my super serious sword mouse. The seriousest sword mouse. With the weirdest Irish accent. We all have really weird voices. <laughs> yeah, I know. We all just went real hard on the voices. I mean, I already I already have trouble with just regular like American English. Um Hey, I'm Simon at Wondering underscore DM. This is my channel. Um next week on Tuesday, like Lauren said, we're gonna have the finale for Star Wars. Uh and then on uh Friday we're potentially going to have our last Witcher episode before the holidays um, because the week after it tends to be a bit more hectic um, so we'll see about that um, and otherwise we'll be on hiatus for like a week or two and then we'll come back right after uh, with new guests for 2019 uh, also um, I will be posting announcements new shows and everything promotions on my Twitter during the Christmas break um, I'm working on them at the moment, but you can expect uh, a lot of different games and a lot of different things going on uh, either on my channel or the other channels where I will appear. And Sunday, if you want to see meet my brand new character on uh, in Koros' uh, game, the Shattered, ha the Shattered Eye, please, um, by all means, come on by and look at me making bad choices. With Are you going to be another sad boy? 
I, I try not to, and then I become a sad boy. <laughs> like, I cannot escape my fate, no matter how... The saddest of boys. ...happy-go-lucky my character's personality can be. Deep down, they're a sad boy. They're always sad boys. All of them. All of them. Um, speaking of earlier, I heard someone mention Magic the Gathering, and I heard, uh, I think Manny mentioned uh, Laurelania's channel. She is actually streaming Magic the Gathering, and she's giving away booster packs. So if you want, we can raid her channel if you guys want to get into Magic the Gathering and get, like, free cards and stuff. Um, there you go. Otherwise, I will uh, see, and we will see you in a week. And in, like, four days for Lauren and I. Ciao, everyone. Have a good weekend.